Hello and welcome to Hank Games Without Hank. My name is John Green. I'm the manager of the AFC Wimbledon Wimbley Womblies. And today we are in the John Stones Paint Trophy competition, a knockout competition for, you know, some lower league clubs like us. We're in the fourth tier of English professional football. Um, and we're taking on the Wolverhampton Wanderers, once the Premier League now of League One, I believe. And uh, we're kind of, so I got to give you a squad update. Uh, we're going to start our Project for Awesome uh, videos today, but I have to give you a, a quick squad update because the January transfer window has ended. I played those games uh, so that I could, because the January transfer window is very time consuming and boring. I didn't want to make you suffer through that. Uh, I played those games without you. Uh, we won all of the games, but we, there, there's no nice way to say this except that we lost the January transfer window. Uh, we lost one of our great players and, and one of the people who we've worked so hard to make happy some more. Um, he is no longer part of our team. He insisted on being sold, and the board agreed with him, and I had a fight with the board, and I lost because I am just one man. I do not own the club. I just manage it. So I asked some more why he wanted to leave, and he said, and I'm quoting him directly, cuz. It's a man of few words. Um, his brother, Les Moore, is still a member of the AFC Wimbledon Wimbley Wombleys, and uh, long may he reign, Les Moore the greatest more in the world. Uh, and we also, we have a new player. I promise this is a coincidence. His name is Seymour. Um, it's actually uh, some more, but, but it's spelled with a C. So it's, it's like Stone Cold S Steve Austin with a C. Um, it's some more, but, but with a C. And uh, he's, he's starting today. He is one of our, our three new players. Um, also, right here on the ball right now, we've got uh, Mr. Fun Run. I don't, know, I don't know how to say his name. So any suggestions for his name would be helpful. And then we also have a new player uh, right there. There's his name. He, it's white. This is, this is encouraging to me because we now have uh, four. I, I promise you, I, I, I believe you guys feel very strongly about me buying the best players. I've heard your chance. We want points, not gingers. Um, not buying players for their names. I bought the best players. Fun Run, White, and... Uh, um, S, um, some more with a C. Those were the best players available um, with AFC Wimbledon Wimbley Wombly budgets. So that's who I bought. Oh, it has to be, but it isn't. Um, that's who I bought. So that's the update on, uh, on that front. We have, a, we have a new team. Oh, and the other thing is that we lost uh, Jack Midson. There's only one Jack Midson. Uh, he insisted on being sold. I was a little frustrated with him, uh, but uh, I understand that he wants to go and help another team make it to the Football League. So that's the update. It was a difficult January transfer window, but you know what? The, a club is stronger than any individual, and we will survive and thrive and grow. And most importantly, we held on to John Green and John Green, teammates in life and in love. Um... Uh, so uh, today we're going to start the Project for Awesome videos. Oh, look at Seb Brown. Look at him, Meredith. He's so beautiful. Um, um, the, uh, during the Project for Awesome, uh, people who donated could get uh, the Wimbly Wombly video on the topic of their choice. Uh, and M donated three times to get that video. So this video and the next two are going to be um, M's, uh, M ch M's chosen topics. Uh, we're going to begin with carbon neutrality and, um, and carbon neutral fuel. Um, and if it's possible for the world to, um, uh, to become a sort of like a z you know, zero carbon emissions world by uh, 2075, 2100, those are usually the kind of goals that, that you see. Um, I, you know, I don't know because I think uh, there's, this, there's this problem among humans. Uh, M in her video description uh, said it's like the prisoner's dilemma played out among 7 billion people, which I thought was really interesting. Um, so if you don't know what the prisoner's dilemma is, let me describe it for you very quickly. You um, are accused of a crime, um, and another person is also accused of the same crime. You don't know this person, but you know that they didn't, re they didn't commit the crime. Um, you are told that if, if you uh, rat this person out, you will... Uh, oh, you will go free, and they will go to jail for 25 years. Did you see what just happened, Meredith? Did you see that? Those two men um, were standing together, and then they humped each other, and they both fell down at the same time, and now one of them is running backwards into the other one. Do you see that? He's just, he, just keeps, he just keeps pushing his bottom up against the other man's... Um, do you see what's happening? They're just getting excited. They're just, let's just see it from a different angle. Oh, yeah. You don't have to stop dancing. Dance on, friend. Um, so 
Uh, if you both rat each other out, you both go to prison for 10 years. And if neither of you rats the other out, you both go to prison for six months. But you don't know what the other person is going to do. Um, this is like, so like, how do you behave? How do you behave well when you don't? Oh, it has to be. And it is. Oh, green eggs and sharing ham. Oh, what's this? Wait, um, he'd eat them in a boat. No, he'd score in a boat. He'd score with a goat. Green eggs and sharing ham. He just scored a goal. That was, I'm still working on it because he'd score with a goat. Sounds like, sounds, that sounds wrong. That's not what I meant. I meant a goal. I meant he'd score with the, t I, I, anyway, you got to help me with that song because clearly we need some, it needs some work. Um, so can, uh, can the world be carbon neutral by, uh, 2075? Yes. Um, will it? Probably not, precisely because it is really, really difficult to trust that other people are going to behave ethically. Um, you want to, but, uh, you know, at the same time, you think like, well, oh, you know, other people are going to do this. You see this now even with, with car carbon emission conversations where the U.S. is like, well, we're not going to sign this treaty because uh, China isn't going to reduce carbon emissions. Um, but and, and China's like, well, but you guys got to do uh, all the carbon emitting that you wanted to do for 100 years of industrialization. And that's why, you know, now you have this gigantic gross domestic product. And that's true. So it's all, um, it, it, you know, it, it, those those sort of international conversations played out, you know, among sovereign countries. It's very difficult. But I was talking about this to my brother, um, who is, you know, the rare, um, uh, the rare passionate environmentalist who is also an optimist. And what he said is that in the past, um, when human beings have, uh, have sort of come together, they have done so in the face of, um, you know, in the face of some kind of opposition, in the face of some great adversity. And usually that great adversity is... Uh, is other people, another group of people. Uh, so, you know, in World War II, the, the people of the United States and Western Europe and South America and Northern Africa came together to fight uh, Nazism, right? Um, and they, but they, they were coming together to fight a different group of people. And this is different. This is a group of people coming together to fight... Um, a, a, a different kind of adversary. But Hank believes that once it becomes uh, not just a question of, and, and this is starting to happen now, not just a question of whether, um, you know, like whether we're going to fight climate change, but a question of how we're going, how we're going to fight climate change and also how we're going to live with climate change, how we're, we're going to have to make big international cross-national, you know, investments in order to, to, to live with the climate change that is already I inevitable. Um, that, that Hank believes that we will like come together in the face of that adversity. Um, I am somewhat less optimistic about that. I, I think that um, I, I, I agree with Hank that like the sort of Lord of the Flies worldview that, that um, the, the strong do what they will and the weak do as they must is, is uh, a bit of an oversimplification and doesn't, doesn't give humans enough credit. But I also think that um, in times of scarce resources, people tend to become quite protective of, of the, their, the resources available to them. And I think that that worries me. Um, I do think that I, I think that, you know, technology, um, you know, it's it. I always make a point when I'm talking about the unsustainable nature of of the way that we're living now, that it's only unsustainable using current technology. I think technology will help us um, in this uh, in this crisis. I might be wrong. I might be wrong about all of this, of course. But I think technology will help, but I, I, I think it's going to be, look, I think it's going to be very difficult. I think that, um, you know, we've had a really good, I know, I'm also frustrated. I wanted you to score too. I think we've had a really good run as a species, um, you know, the last uh, 200, 300 years. And I think that um, we, we're going to find that a lot of that was, uh, you know, like that, that growth or the idea, of, the idea of growth was not permanently sustainable. Um, that said, I think there are going to be a lot of carbon, zero carbon fuels that come out. I think that I think there are going to be a lot of um, a, a lot of technologies that come out that help us deal with, um, you know, that, that help us kind of power the world and uh, continue to have industrialization without having to have these huge, um, these massive 
uh, CO2 emissions. So I do, I am very hopeful about that. I think 2075 might be a little soon. Then again, you know, the pace of, the pace of change always seems to be picking up. Like, I, I mean, it's a, it is astonishing to me that, you know, I, I had a computer. My dad brought home our first computer when I was seven or eight years old, and it was an Apple II. And, um, you know, you, it's only been less than 30 years since then, and the world is just vastly different. Arthur! Oh, it has to be, but it isn't. You had an open net, sir. Oh, the entire net was at your disposal, and you just made a different choice. You made a choice to kick it out of bounds. See, I would have scored in that situation, Meredith. I would have. But, you know, there's a kind of boldness to choosing to kick it out of bounds. I think he was on his weak foot. He was leaning backwards. That's probably on me for hitting the B button at the wrong time. Um, that guy's name was Ricketts Ricketts. It's a pretty good name. But we don't buy players because of their name anymore. Um, that said, AFC Wimbledon is becoming uh, very much uh, a very broad color palette with uh, brown, white, green, and green. Um... So, um, yeah, I think, uh, I, I, I do think, you know, I think that hydrogen is, is going to be, a, and I think, you know, <clears throat> is going to be a big deal. And as Hank points out, the price of solar panels has dropped 70% just in the last year. Um, so I think as solar panels become affordable, it's going to really transform the way that we think about power. Um, they're going to become both um, portable uh, or, you know, they're going to become sort of easier to install in more places. Uh, you're going to see them as like windows. Um, and I think that's, uh, but, you know, the real question is coming up with the technology that allows us to store, um, store that fuel effectively or store that energy effectively in a way that's, that's reasonably carbon friendly. I don't, I, I think it's going to be hard to do it carbon, to totally carbon neutral, but we don't have to. Um, we just have to, we just have to, you know, shrink the overall size of our, our carbon output. I believe that we will do that. I hope that I am alive to see it. I'll tell you what I was alive to see. The AFC Wimbledon Wimbley Womblies win 1-0 aggregate over Wolverhampton to head to the Johnstone's Paint Trophy Final, I think. Which I think is at Wembley. I hope we get paid for that. You know, football isn't about money. Squat in shame, sir. Football isn't about money. But, um... If the January transfer window taught me anything, it's that AFC Wimbledon d does need money. Thanks for watching. Best wishes.